Good morning. This is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Sioux Falls police are investigating a pair of deadly crashes. Saturday afternoon, the male driver of a motorcycle died in a crash with an SUV. It happened at the intersection of West 8th Street and North Colville Avenue. A female passenger on the motorcycle was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police say the two were not wearing helmets. A 50-year-old man died in a crash in a Sioux Falls rock quarry Saturday morning. Police used aerial photos to determine that his pickup crashed in the southwest corner of the quarry. Fire rescue used the jaws of life to remove the man's body from the truck. Police say it appears the man was wearing his seatbelt. The cause is under investigation. Police are also investigating a third crash from Saturday. This one involved three vehicles at 54th Street and Cliff Avenue. Two people were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police say one of the drivers is facing several charges connected to the crash, including DUI. Investigators in Sioux Falls are looking into what sparked a fire in the central part of the city. Sioux Falls Fire Rescue says it happened at an apartment building near Lowell Elementary. Crews arriving on scene found smoke coming from the lower level of the building. Firefighters were able to put the fire out within 10 minutes. People were found on the first and second floors of the building. They were taken outside and no one was hurt. And one woman was taken to the hospital after suffering a medical emergency near the top of Black Elk Peak. Custer County Search and Rescue says they were called to the area at 5.30 Mountain Time Sunday morning. They say the woman and her friends had hiked to the summit to watch the sunrise. She tried to hike back down but had severe abdominal pain. Crews carried the woman to an ATV as her condition worsened, took her to an ambulance that then brought her to the Custer Hospital. Now let's send it over to meteorologist Scott Munn for a check on our morning forecast. Going to be a warm one today, Scott. Oh, downright mild. Numbers in the 60s today across western South Dakota. We'll have highs near 60 in central Kettleland and every bit of 40 degree weather will be found across eastern South Dakota. Plenty of sunshine to go around. High of 45 today in Sioux Falls. Many of these temperatures will end up being the warmest day of the year so far. More details on the Kettleland Live Doppler forecast with Brian coming up. Thank you, Scott. The South Dakota Army National Guard 1742nd Transportation Company was welcomed home yesterday in Sioux Falls after a 13-month deployment to the southern border near Tucson, Arizona. 125 soldiers who actually returned about three months ago officially had their welcome home ceremony. The company was on the U.S.-Mexico border occupying 10 surveillance sites spanning 150 miles. Just so heartwarming, you know, that we could bring everybody home and, you know, just because it wasn't an overseas mission didn't mean that we had challenges and risks that we faced every day being stateside. And so to, to have everybody come home was, when they came home and I knew that they got off that plane, that's when I took such a deep sigh of relief. For them to be willing to step forward to help anytime our country needs them, it's remarkable. Time after time in South Dakota communities and elsewhere, you hear people say, uh, thank the good Lord for the South Dakota National Guard. In addition to Dusty Johnson, guests included Governor Christy Nome, Sioux Falls Mayor Paul Tenhaken, and Flandreau Mayor Dan Sutton, who all spoke at the ceremony. A village is rising in central Sioux Falls for veterans at risk of or who have previously experienced homelessness. Five tiny houses are being built as part of the Veterans Community Project Village. Eventually, there will be 25 homes here. Ten of them will be for families. Director of Development Alicia Grove says she has been emotionally impacted by what's happening. I have been moved every single day since I started in late October. Um, I've been brought to tears by community members, by the stories that I've heard. Veterans Community Project is a Kansas City-based nonprofit. The Sioux Falls Executive Director is hopeful it won't be long before the first veteran can move in. A food pantry at the University of Sioux Falls now has a new location. What started out as just a few shelves in the lower level of the library, the Cougar Cupboard now has its own dedicated space in a room just down the hall. There's also a fridge and freezer, meaning students have access to items like milk, eggs, and cheese. We do receive a donation from Breadsmith every Wednesday, so students get a lot of bread, and then they really ask for things to complement the bread. So we do deli meat and cheese now, we do peanut butter and jelly, things like that. 
Um, otherwise, we get a lot of requests for like those freezer meals and then also just, uh, you know, your fruits, your vegetables. The food pantry originally opened in the spring of 2021. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, a lot of things to talk about here with weather. Let's begin with our Futurecast update. And uh, obviously today is going to be a nice weather day. We've been talking about that uh, with 60 degree weather, Rapid City, Pier, even at midday, you're up close to 50. We'll probably get by the end of the afternoon, near 60 degrees. Aberdeen will fall a little short of that, but at least in the upper 30s to low 40s. Sioux Falls area probably in the middle 40s this afternoon. So we are melting snow. We're going to continue with a south wind tonight. That wind will start to gust in Sioux Falls stronger uh, past 7 or 8 o'clock. It'll be gusting in that 30 mile an hour range. Here come the showers. They'll be working their way up from Nebraska. And as that happens, the rain will be, of course, contributing to the melting that occurs tomorrow. We anticipate Sioux Falls with looking at this map, that steady rain late morning through your lunch hour into the afternoon. Now, let's say for an example, we end up with a half an inch of rain. I'll throw that out. That seems like a reasonable number in the Sioux Falls area. That alone, if we get that much uh, rainfall, that's going to take away about three to four inches of snow, just like that. So that's enough. We've got 12 inches on the ground. We're probably going to be at least that eight inch number by the end of the day. Uh, tomorrow could be less than that. Obviously, temperatures too contributing to the melting. So we'll be uh, watching all of the effects of that. The rainwater running down the streets. Some of those culverts and things could get plugged up a little bit. We'll have to see how that unfolds. Notice your snow, Aberdeen, and uh, that's coming in tomorrow evening. Now there is snow earlier than that in Rapid City. Not necessarily a lot of snow. Black Hills, that could be an exception, six inches or more. But the wind, that's our biggest problem eastern, northeastern Keveland tomorrow night. If we start getting these wind gusts well over 40 to 50, that's just going to be blowing that snow sideways. And it is going to lead to potential blizzard-like weather. So that's why the winter storm watches out for Aberdeen and Watertown. But clearly the wind is not just in that area. There's wind out in Pier. There's plenty of wind coming into Sioux Falls too, past midnight and getting into the early morning hours of Wednesday. So those snow lines even just, uh, you know, McCook County, get up in the lake and Moody and Brookings area. That whole area could still get into some headlines here if this scenario continues to unfold the way it's going. So my strong recommendation is you just check in on the weather. We'll be here in the Storm Center to give you the latest updates throughout the day. Uh, of course, we've got numerous updates coming here even by midday in Kevalam. The total amount of water right now, Sioux Falls, we've got that quarter to half inch range, but even uh, Worthington and Spencer up to Marshall could run a little more than that. Uh, they, those are things that for this time of year in February, that's still quite a bit of moisture. Seven day forecast, once we roll this system out of here, which will be kind of leftover snow and wind issues on Wednesday morning, it's going to be colder Thursday for a day. Then we're back to the 30s this weekend. So I don't see that southern system on Thursday being an impact here. There will be quite a bit of snow in Iowa and Missouri and Kansas on Thursday, but we're thinking it'll just be cold in most of South Dakota. Aberdeen about 14 on Thursday. So I guess we got to fit in a couple mornings there below zero, but even the weekend should be back on track. Pier, we're already going back to 40 degree weather on Friday. And I do think that Rapid City, after a brief coating of snow starting tomorrow, uh, again, there'll be some accumulations here, probably in that two to four inch range. But we'll melt that again as we get toward the weekend. Find out more coverage online at kettleland.com.